to cataractcoach.com and we're watching a resident surgery. So this is August of the senior year for residency here in the U.S. This surgeon's done about 30 cases so far as a primary surgeon. So there's the paracentesis being made. So it's a lot to learn when you watch these younger surgeons who are just operating. This surgeon is particularly talented. This is actually going to be a beautiful case. We're about 16 minutes total, which for August or the beginning of the senior year is quite good. During the training here in the U.S., our residents do about 300 cataracts as primary surgeon at our UCLA facility in our training program. That's on the high end for, of the spectrum for U.S. programs. So the resident now is going to fill the anterior chamber with viscoelastic. So injecting some viscoelastic. It looks like a cohesive viscoelastic. That's a nice strong fill. And you can see the viscoelastic coming out of the eye. That's definitely a cohesive viscoelastic. Now the plus side there is it's going to make chamber maintenance better. It's going to be a little easier to do the capsorexis. But the downside is it's going to be washed out a lot easier. So it's not going to protect the corneal endothelium as much during the phaco part of the procedure. Here's the main incision. So fixating the eye with forceps. Here's the keratome and a temporal incision. Hitting epithelium there, advancing it in the stroma. And tunnel length looks just great. So entering the anterior chamber right about now, there's decimase layer. And you see how much viscoelastic came out of the eye. That's very typical for a cohesive. That was a very nice incision. That's an incision that'll seal well and provide an uh, appropriate amount of maneuverability inside the eye. So this resident's choosing to use a cystotome to start at the rexus. So again, look at the viscoelastic that exits the eye. Again, that's common for the cohesive. It stays together as a big bunch. So cutting across with the cystotome and attempting to flip over the edge, there's pretty good. There's an edge right there, and there's the flap that's turned over. Coming out of the incision. And now with the capsorexis forceps. So grabbing that flap that's flipped over. You also notice the microscope's put on primarily red reflex view to really highlight that. So here comes the capsorexis, doing a good job pivoting in the incision, bringing the capsorexis into position to make the regrab easier. Good pivoting, very good pivoting. Do you see there's no distortion of the cornea? So this looks great. I'd encourage this resident to do a little bit longer traveling before regrabbing. So you don't have to regrab it so many times. That looks great. That's much better. And then finishing it up. So this was very well done. And the thing I like the most is the pivoting within the incision. How the resident's not dinging the cornea, not uh, distorting the cornea, not prolapsing more viscoelastic through the incision. So the difficult part, the hard thing to learn is how to pivot the incision. And early in the curve of learning, this resin's doing pretty well. So that's a very good rexus. It's very nice. So now it's time for some hydrodissection. Again, watch the incision carefully because you'll see how much viscoelastic we're going to lose. And that's normal for a cohesive. So there's the cannula, good fluid wave coming across. Look at all that viscoelastic coming out of the eye. Now you got to be aware, at this point, there's almost no viscoelastic left in the eye. Certainly the corneal endothelium is not very well protected. This is why I encourage you to put some dispersive viscoelastic to protect the endothelium of the cornea prior to putting the phaco probe in the eye. So good hydrodissection, multiple waves. This should rotate quite easily. There, look at that. And the resident has uh, decided to do a stop and chop technique for this surgery. So adjusting the phaco probe, that means this first setting will be more of a sculpt setting. So moderate power, low vacuum, low flow. You don't need to vacuum a lot of material away. You don't need to run a lot of fluid through the eye. It's primarily using the energy to sculpt that groove. There's taking out the air bubble. Again, that's also taking out whatever little viscoelastic is left. 
bevel up on the phaco probe, cleaning up a little bit of the anterior cortex, that's fine. And time for the first groove here. Let's see what we got. Now what I'm looking at is not only the groove itself, but the, see the cornea light reflex in the center of the cornea? We're seeing how well does the resident keep the eye in a normal primary position during the surgery. See the light reflex should stay right in the middle there. It's a nice groove here. I'd pull back a little bit more to start the groove a little earlier. Now widening up the groove. Looking good. So we're not really starting the groove sub-incisionally, so this is a case where the resident may want to do the groove this way, then rotate the nucleus 180 and kind of regroove the part of the nucleus that's right now underneath the phaco probe. So again, a little bit of uh, grooving here. We'll widen this up. Notice how the resident's really taking his time. No rush here. This is a male resident, but certainly can apply to male or female. And it has a pretty nice groove here. Nuclear density is, mo density is moderate, so putting the chopper in the eye. And put both instruments deep within the groove. And let's see the split, that's excellent. And so notice how the lens is cracked into two halves, and care is taken to make sure there's full separation of both halves. So make sure it's really separate. There's sub there you go, that was the last hold out sub incisionally. So now we go to high vacuum, high flow mode to bring the piece up. Now, buzzing in the nucleus in the center is going to be tough to bring the piece up. So I'd actually encourage you to buzz in towards the end or the edge. Now, that center is not what you want. You want it towards this, the end. It's easier to bring one corner of this half up out of the capsule bag. If you try to bring the half up through the, the, by holding the middle of it, it's too big and bulky. That's not going to work. That's better. Almost. Take buzz in the probe at the corner of one of these halves. The yes. Then the half can come up. Chopper goes around it and breaks off a piece. Beautiful. Nice chop there. Notice again, eye is staying in primary position. This is half the battle when you're just starting to learn. Little bit of phaco energy being given, mostly fluidics to remove the nuclear pieces. So we have half in the bag and about a quarter left here at the iris plane. Buzzing in again. And then, let's see, do we accomplish another chop? That's really great. So this is a resident that's going to really wow me over the course of the next year. And if the resident is doing this well this early on, the, and the, the amount of effort is, is kept up and the resident keeps learning every day, this will be fantastic a year from now. So half the nucleus is out, half remains in the capsule bag. Rotating that half to bring it towards or in front of the phaco probe. Foot pedal, foot pedal is position one. Again, don't go to the middle, but go to the side, the corner. So buzzing in here with the phaco probe. Now there's more room, of course. Chopper goes around the equator of the lens. Get the chopper a little further in the eye. There you go. Beautiful chop. And taking that piece down. And nice and easy. Little little bit of phaco energy, mostly aspiration, mostly the fluidics to remove the cataract pieces. This is not very dense. It's a very typical cataract for here in Los Angeles. So a little bit more phaco energy. The chopper again. That didn't chop because it wasn't being held by the probe. So you have to make sure it's securely being held by the phaco probe and the vacuum. But this is small enough that I wouldn't worry about chopping it any further. Instead, just give a little bit of energy. Take down the last pieces here. Good fluidic settings. Eye looks pretty stable. Not much post-occlusion surge. Let's take a look one more time at the stability. That looks great. So coming out of the eye, time for irrigation aspiration. So very well done. Placement of the incisions I like, they're a little bit shy of 90 degrees away. It's maybe about 70 degrees between incisions, 75 degrees. That looks great here. Anything between, I'd say, 1 to 3 clock hours away is typical. Most residents tend, and me, I tend to prefer about 2 clock hours away. It's 60 degrees between the side port and the main incision. So switching to the IA probe, again, we're going to do higher flow, higher vacuum. 
and then remove the lens cortex, eye probe being placed in the eye. Now, to remove cortex, I do like a circumferential pattern. So grabbing here the cortex with the vacuum, about halfway on the pedal right now, until I grab a significant amount, I like to get at least a couple clock hours, and then with a strong grab of the of cortex, then I'll put the pedal all the way down to the highest vacuum. So taking our time here. Also, you should be watching the capsular rexus during this, just to make sure the capsular rexus does not move. Of course, movement of the capsular rexus, as you've seen from previous videos here on Cataract Coach, that can indicate zonular weakness. And we don't see any of that, so it all looks pretty good. So care taken to remove the very last piece here. Sub-incisional. And that looks great. You know, a little bit of caps are polishing. Just to be cautious here. With uh, beginner hands, we want to err on the side of being cautious. Certainly, it's not a big deal to have to do a YAG laser capsulotomy later. That's an easy procedure. I know if it's my eye having cataract surgery, I just don't want to have a capsule rupture. I'll tolerate a little opacity of the posterior capsule because I know that after a month or two of healing, we can certainly do a YAG laser capsulotomy and clear that right up with very, very low risk. So time to fill the eye with viscoelastic. Again, we want a cohesive viscoelastic here. Fill in the capsule bag nice and deep. And that looks great. Then we're going to load up I believe a single piece acrylic lens, a monofocal lens. In general, for our county hospital patients, we do put in mostly monofocal IOLs. Very rarely do we put in a multifocal lens. On some occasions, the residents will do toric lenses for patients with higher degrees of astigmatism. But by and large, our fastball, our typical technique, is to use a monofocal single piece acrylic lens. And we aim for a target of some routine Plano and about minus one. As we all know, a little bit of myopia is really a blessing, especially in our world where we do so much with near vision. So the video, I'm going to have it run in real time, just so you know, the resident's loading up the, the IOL now. Of course, these uh, young doctors don't have any presbyopia, so they can load the lens perfectly fine without the microscope. So here comes the lens, fixating the eye with the chopper, putting the injector tip inside the incision, and delivering that lens into the capsule bag. That looks great. Underneath the nasal rexus, slowly delivering the lens. Beautifully folded, good job there. And now let's position the lens underneath the capsule rexus. There we go. Nice and easy. I'd rotate the lens a little bit more just to ensure that the haptics open up fully in the capsule bag. So here's the IA probe. Put the probe in the eye and you can help push the IOL optic posteriorly. We certainly need to wait for that last haptic to open up. Don't leave the lens like this. And so you can give it a little nudge. Again, sometimes it's tougher if you put the cold water from the IA probe inside the eye because these acrylic lenses don't unfold as quickly when they're cold. So that's why I would leave the eye full of viscoelastic and, and open both arms under viscoelastic fill using the chopper prior to putting the eye a probe in the eye. That lens is opened up beautifully. It's completely underneath the capsular axis. Time to remove our viscoelastic. Now, early in the, in the learning curve, I don't ask the residents to go behind the eye well to remove viscoelastic. I just have them move from in front of the eye and maybe rock the optic a little bit back and forth to give a little more um, exposure and a little bit more flow of fluid to wash out the viscoelastic. Here's the corneal hydration. I don't particularly like this technique of hydrating the corners of the incision only. I prefer to do that mid-stroma of the cornea back and forth because here you have two strong areas of hydration but nothing right in the middle of the incision. Paracentesis is hydrated as well. Now the incision was very well constructed so I don't anticipate any issues with leakage. But that uh, corneal hydration for the main incision is uh, different than I prefer. 
Here's a wet cell to check the incision, and that looks pretty good. So this resident and somebody this resident did a very good job with the surgery for a stop and chop technique. The only things for improvement I think would be to one, consider using a dispersive viscoelastic to better protect the corneal endothelium. Number two, in creating the capsorexis, it was done very well. Maybe a fewer fewer grabs, a little bit longer travel before regrabbing. During the nucleus removal, the grooves were very good. I'd start the groove a little more in the sub-incisional space to have a longer groove length. The chopping of the, the cracking of the nucleus was fine. The chopping of the nucleus, the uh, resident soon figured out, don't grab the middle of the nuclear piece and so grab the corner. It's easier to bring the corner of that half up than it is to bring the whole middle of it up. And then for the remainder of the case, irrigation aspiration was great, and then the cortex, again, was uh, done very well. So good job for this resident, and I look forward to operating with you.